We continue to get you ready for Syracuse and Boston College this upcoming Saturday. Brian Higgins here across town in the football auditorium is the starting punter in Nolan Cooney. And uh, Nolan, uh, here you are in the next in line here of the, the Syracuse uh, great punting tradition, which feels like it's been going on uh, forever now with uh, Sterling Hoffrichter uh, before you, going uh, back before that with Riley Dixon, Rob Long, Brendan Carney, on and on, Mike Schaefer. I mean, we could just keep naming them here back and back throughout the years. Uh, what's it like for you to have, have the success you're having this year after uh, so many guys have done it right before you? Well, I think, first of all, it's a, it's a testament to learning from Sterling. He's, he's a great mentor for me. It's not necessarily always the things that he says to me or talking about technique, what he's trying to accomplish out there on the field. It's really watching to see what he does. Each day he would come out and attack whatever it may be, the things he wanted to work on and really understanding the things that he does, watching his technique. He's really clean in what he does. And, you know, there's no better mentor than, uh, than an NFL punter. And there's only 32 of them. Like, that's <laughs> right. not they, – they don't have a backup in the league. And then <laughs> Syracuse has produced a two of the 32, which is a, a pretty good ratio. You mentioned watching Sterling. I mean, most punters, you know, you're, you're good at the one thing you do, and you do it well. Sterling, it felt like he had every, like, golf club – in the bag of different punts he could do. How, how much did that help you to watch uh, every different kind of kick he had? I mean, it felt like he had 8 million uh, different ways he punted the ball. Oh, he's excellent. And, you know, I, I think that he, uh, th there are things that I'm trying to do that he does. Uh, but, you know, from what he does, you know, ultimately what he does is he gets a ton of hang time on the ball. He gets great direction and he does exactly what he's coached to do each and every time. And, whether it was punt or kickoff, you know, he's fearless on kickoff as well. You go out and go make tackles. There are things that he does that, you know, no other player on the field is able to do. Well, hey, you've been doing all that stuff too when you talk about hang time and inside the 20 and top 15 in the country right now and punt average, however you want to look at it, you're having an excellent first season as uh, the orange punter. So I'll ask you this, did, did you ever think this was going to come? I mean, you you were here for years. I mean, you were the holder, you were – definitely doing stuff, but you said it, you're behind an NFL guy. There's a freshman coming in in James Williams who was waiting in the wings. Did you think you were going to get the chance you got this year? You know, I really just tried to come out and treat, treat it like a competition. I knew Sterling was a, was an excellent punter and I most likely was not going to play each week, but if you really attack it each week, whether it's scout team reps or second team reps, you have an opportunity to get better each and every time that you step out onto the field. And I tried to treat that mentality the same each and every day. But going into this year, I think as you build confidence, taking one team reps, and then you start getting into the games and in UNC, you know, there are jitters absolutely as you get on the bus. But once you're out there on the field and you're 14 and a half yards back behind Aaron Belinsky and you know that ball is going to be there every single time. You know, he makes it so easy that each time that I go out there, I have, you know, you gain more confidence with each rep that you have. I'd say the Orange have also had an excellent run in long snappers, too, <laughs> which, is, which makes it easier on you guys, which is uh, nice back there. You don't have to do a, a lot of thinking, which has got to help you out. It must have been great, too, that, okay, you weren't the punter the last couple of years, but let's not say you were doing nothing. You were the holder for the Lou Groza award winner a couple of years ago. That that's gotta be fun out there to be the holder for a kicker and Andre Schmidt who basically never misses. Well, I mean, he makes me look a lot better than I probably am. You get every single time you go out there, the expectation is, and, and you feel that that ball's going between the uprights each and every time, but you take uh, holding, I, you know, I, I treated it like it was the Super Bowl each time you go out there. And Andre, you know, was, is just so automatic each and every time you have Matt Keller, who was a snapper before and Aaron Belinsky, and they take, they take all the work out of it for me. I don't have to worry about the laces. I don't have to worry about catching the ball. Cause I know that each and every time it's going to be right there. And Andre is going to attack that rep each time. Yeah. You mentioned Keller and then uh, Aaron behind him. I, I literally do not remember a legitimately bad snap on a field goal PAT punt in I mean, it's going on like six or seven years now. I, it, that's crazy. I mean, that just does not happen at the college level. No, they are, you know, and, and if you, if we watch the way that they attack practice each and every day, you know, you'll see them on the sideline. If it's trying to hit a tennis ball or a cone, whatever it may be lodged into the wall, just, you know, snapping, snapping, snapping. And uh, they do a really good job of really focusing on, on what the task is. And it's not necessarily always just what they do, snapping. 
you know, you look at what Matt and what Aaron do in coverage and the whole coverage team, it's unbelievable. You know, I think that what the numbers show for me is a testament to what they do out there on the field. You look at what the net punt, which is, you know, I think it's, it's what it's exactly what you're trying to look for from gunner play, from protection, from long snapping. It's, it's all 11 guys out there that really make up that statistic. Yeah. You could kick it a million miles, but if the guy catches yeah. it and runs it back, what, what's the difference? And you're right. The coverage has been outstanding as well. Uh, Nolan Cooney with us here and, Nolan, we, we've told Rex Culpepper's life story a million times here in the last few years, and we know about his testicular cancer and the battle back for it, and I think so much of that is because it happened to him in college. Well, it happened to you too, but it happened in high school, so that's not really a story that we knew a lot about or told. What's that like for you to have that happen at, at that stage in your life, and now, now you get here and you have a teammate and you watch Rex go through it while you were here with him? Right. You know, you look at that time in my life and I think that it really lends a lot of perspective. You know, if it's, you know, I'm going out there to punt, let's say it doesn't go exactly the way I want to. I got to understand that there's going to be, a, there's going to be more punting opportunities in my life. And, you know, let's say a test doesn't go exactly how I want it to. I can, I can hone in and I can attack that test the next time that I take it. And what Rex does, you know, he's an incredibly competitive guy. You know, if you saw the ping pong matches that we had, you, I think everyone would understand. But he went out and he attacked each and every day of chemo as if it was practice or a game. And, you know, he made, he made it look so easy the way that he went through that process. He crushed it. He was here. He was here to support. He was working out, whatever it may be. And, you know, for me, it was just if he needed anything, if he had any questions about the process of going through chemotherapy or the surgery that you have to go through, I just wanted to be there to support him and, you know, not necessarily get in his way because he was, he was on a roll the way that he was attacking it. You mentioned the perspective. I mean, you had it when you're, you're 17, uh, 17 is not an age that comes with a lot of perspective. So I imagine that, that, that sort of helps you, as you said, uh, going forward. And I imagine it's also played a large part in your role uh, of your involvement in uplifting athletes. Uh, what are you, the vice president of, of the Syracuse chapter and Aaron Bolinsky is the president. How proud are you guys and, what you've done, and it's kind of the playoff of really what started back when Rob Long was here. Right. You know, Rob is, is an unbelievable human being. If, if everybody gets an opportunity to learn from Rob or hear his story, it's, it's, it's one that really touches the heart. And Rob is, you know, somebody that I've grown to become a really good friend, and it's not necessarily just punting or if it was being cancer survivors. He's somebody that I can look up to, reach out to for advice. And uplifting athletes is a testament to so many people that go through rare diseases and that Rob and his team over at Uplifting Athletes are there to support them and raise awareness for people that don't necessarily get all the coverage of many other diseases out there in the world. And what they do is, is unbelievable. Yeah, obviously uh, a lot of stuff that, that deals with kids as well and uh, everything that uh, has been done with that program really over the last decade is Amazing. And the Syracuse program, if, if I'm not mistaken, Nolan, is one of the leading ones in the country. Am I correct? That's correct. And it helps that Rob is the leader of uplifting athletes and he's a Syracuse grad. But I think people really understand the value of, of what the events are here at Syracuse with uplifting athletes. Rob is here to support us through anything. And, and Aaron now taking over, Sam Heckel before, have done an unbelievable job with uh, creating the events, the uh, events, the touchdown pledge drives, all the things that go through uh, uplifting athletes. And those guys are, are unbelievable at what they do. And, and we see it spreading throughout all, all of college uh, football and college sports, which is uh, great to see. Uh, Nolan, I'll, I'll ask you this, because this week is uh, certainly unique on the football schedule, which uh, Tuesday is normally one of the main days you hop in and, and start game prep. And uh, election day was Tuesday this week. And the NCAA said, hey, not, not this year. You guys need the time to vote and, and do things around it. Uh, you're one of the few guys around here that that's old enough that this could have been your second presidential election. How, how did you handle it this year? And how did the team really come together around what has been uh, such a, a unique election season? Right. It was, it was really cool that everyone has the opportunity to go out and express their right to vote, regardless of who you support. We look at it from a team perspective that it's a collective group of so many different guys from different cultures, different states, and, you know, we all come together for that same goal. And, you know, you look at it from a country perspective and that's what the, uh, that's what the whole hope is of going through this election process is that everyone comes together regardless of your beliefs and you come through and you try and achieve that ultimate goal. And for us, that's, 
that's winning football games, regardless of what you're, what you believe in. And, you know, we're appreciative that everyone has the opportunity and the day off to go out and express that. Right. All right, Nolan, let's wrap up on uh, this. You're a Northeast guy. You're uh, what Rhode Island, Syracuse, BC this week. I mean, you've grown up, you've seen this, this rivalry uh, up close and personal. What's it like for you uh, getting ready to play Boston college this week? It'll be, a, it'll be a great game. And I think that we really look at it and we've attacked this week of practice. It's, uh, you know, Boston College is not far from home, but my mom is a Syracuse grad, so she always honed in my, uh, my rooting for the orange. All right. Well, it's good to have had the color correct for, uh, for most of your life. And uh, <laughs> great to see you out there, Nolan, having the, the success you are this year. Uh, keep it up, and uh, we'll look for you out on the field here this Saturday. Great. Thanks, Brian.